Hi guys, this is Dr. Santosh Patil and I teach medicine for an academy, NEET PG, FMG as well as INICET. Okay, today we are connecting to discuss an important conceptual topic. Now it is not conceptual but I will try to make it conceptual. The topic is differentiation between systemic sclerosis, two subvariants, the limited cutaneous and diffuse cutaneous. I know these, these differences are important MCQ points and every now and then you get questions about it. Right, So they can ask you. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is more common in which subvariant, whether it is limited cutaneous or diffuse cutaneous. Similarly, ILD is more common in which type. Digital ulcers, calcinosis, cutis, scleroderma, renal crisis, these are all common in which of these types. Right? Or they may ask you to pick up a false statement or a true statement which is concerned about one of these subvariants. So they can say that pick up the false statements regarding limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis. So there may be one statement which is more in favor of diffuse cutaneous, right? You can definitely memorize all those points, but then you know that the vastness of medicine and it may be really, really difficult for you to memorize. So let me come out with some important hacks which will help you to remember these points. Now before I get into the topic proper, let me introduce you to what we're doing in an academic currently. We're coming out with this NEET PG 2022 Ultimate Revision Package. Okay, this is for whom? This is probably suitable for all those candidates who are preparing for NEET PG 2022. Why I say this is suitable for all the candidates? Because we hardly have three or four months of time in our hand to tackle NEET PG 2022. Regardless of your preparation stage, this may be really a uh, testing time because there was a very, very meager time gap between the last NEET PG and the upcoming NEET PG, right? So this package is mainly focusing on running multiple MCQ marathons and then coming out with discussion videos. So thus you are going to have a test and discussion format. And given the, the fact that there is very limited time left with us, this probably works well, right? And those who are preparing for FMG, there is also a dedicated batch called FMG Focus 2022 batch that may be helpful. And to make things little easier, right? An Academy is coming out with this NEAT PG combat. So if you participate, which is on the 19th of December, if you participate, and crack great ranks, you may get handsome discounts as much as 100% scholarship for those who get first rank or up to third rank, right? And you can also use the code MEDLOVE to get 10% discount even if you're not able to crack a great rank, right? You may still get 10% discount on all Unacademy's plus packages. Okay. Now let us get into the topic that we were discussing. This is the conceptual medicine and we will be discussing differentiation between limited cutaneous versus diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis. Okay, what are the points we should know? We should know skin involvement in both these types, which is probably very easy for you to remember. But we should know which type is more prone to develop digital ulcers, which type is more prone to develop critical digit ischemia. Okay, then we should also know which type is more prone to develop pulmonary arterial hypertension, which type is more prone to develop interstitial lung disease, which type is more prone to develop calcinosis cutis, calcification of the skin, and which type is more prone to develop scleroderma renal crisis. To, to make things simplify, let me just tell you a little bit about the pathophysiology. Right. So what happens in systemic sclerosis is because of the combination of environmental factors, genetic predisposition and all, patients develop endothelial injury right? this is the starting point endothelial injury leading to ischemia of the small distal capillaries right? the main site where it is injured is capillaries so there is the ischemia in response to ischemia right, there is the fibrotic response so the process of fibrosis starts in response to ischemia right? this is a very very rough and very simplistic approach so we start with endothelial injury leads to ischemia and in response body responds by producing cytokines which trigger fibrosis what are the cytokines the most important cytokine is transforming growth factor beta so this is the spectrum of the pathophysiological process starts with endothelial injury and ends with the fibrosis right so just remember, in case of limited cutaneous sclerosis, this is a hack. Okay, This is not something that you should be writing in a 10 marks paper. This is just a hack. In case of limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis, the dominant force which is causing the damage is endothelial injury. 
okay so there is there is much more severe endothelial injury in comparison to the fibrotic process that is being stimulated in case of diffuse cutaneous right there is more of a fibrotic uh, process than the endothelial injury it is, this is just a hack to remember with this you can answer all the questions that can be asked from this slide right let me take you back to this now now in case of limited sclero cutaneous sclerosis what is the dominant force that is causing the damage that is endothelial injury right and in case of uh, diffuse cutaneous what is the dominant force that is causing the injury that is the fibrotic process right fibrosis coming to skin involvement this one particular point i will make it clear right so skin involvement in case of limited cutaneous is restricted to distal portions beyond elbow and knee right hand involvement is characteristic obviously but the fibrotic process is not extending proximal to elbow or knee if you are talking about lower limb right so it is restricted to elbow to other distal structures in case of diffuse cutaneous this is extending proximal to elbow and knee right? proximal to elbow and knee this one point you have to remember rest of the things you can now start making sense i want you to remember additional point in case of diffuse cutaneous the renaud's phenomenon and skin changes skin changes are nothing but tightening or thickening right both occur together the onset is co onset in case of limited cutaneous the renaud's phenomenon precedes it precedes many years before you start noticing the skin changes okay this is one additional point i want you to note now coming to the next point digital ulcer who is more prone to develop right so remember my hack endothelial injury is more common or it is the dominant force in case of limited cutaneous sclerosis so now tell me who is going to develop digital ulcers yes limited cutaneous right so this is more common in limited cutaneous in comparison to diffuse cutaneous critical digital ischemia again endothelial injury is on which side limited cutaneous side right so obviously the critical digital ischemia is also more common in case of limited cutaneous pulmonary arterial hypertension we are talking about artery so endothelial injury kis ke side pe hai limited cutaneous right so pulmonary arterial hypertension is also more common in case of limited cutaneous now coming to interstitial lung disease interstitial lung disease is what it's a process where there is fibrosis so fibrotic process is a dominant force on which side obviously diffuse cutaneous right so interstitial lung disease is more common in case of diffuse cutaneous okay now coming to calcinosis cutis just remember calcinosis cutis we can also call limited cutaneous as crest syndrome right so one of the part of this crest syndrome is calcinosis cutis so calcinosis cutis is more common in case of limited cutaneous you can just say limited cutaneous is probably an equivalent to crest syndrome right now coming to the last thing scleroderma renal crisis so for this remember it is more common in case of diffuse right what is scleroderma renal crisis this is a high renin state where patients present with new onset hypertension okay so there is not much of uh, uh, structural injury to kidney so i don't say that the kidneys are fibrous and that that is why you are getting these changes but just remember it kuch to balance karna chahiye na so we so far we have only donated this interstitial lung disease to diffuse cutaneous type right? so let us also donate kidneys right so the two organs which can be donated are commonly affected in case of diffuse cutaneous so in other words you can also remember in case of diffuse cutaneous fibrotic changes are extending beyond the elbow and jo kuch bhi major internal organs hai they are getting more affected in case of diffuse cutaneous on the other hand it is the external structures which are more affected in case of limited cutaneous so from that perspective also you can answer that calcinosis cutis is more common in case of limited cutaneous right that is my approach so you if you remember that the vessel injury related things and complications are attributed to the limited cutaneous and fibrotic process related or internal organ related complications attributed to diffuse cutaneous with this hack you will be able to tackle most of the questions coming from that and before i wind up i just want you to remember i'm not related to my hack but 
for the sake of uh, completion remember it is anti centromere antibodies which are characteristically seen in case of limited cutaneous and it is anti scl70 antibodies which are characteristically seen in case of diffuse cutaneous okay i hope you will be able to apply this just do give a try of few mcqs after this session and it will be like will be cemented in your mind